Hi everybody, I'm Eric. Welcome to I Want My Inks TV Reviews. And today we're going to be talking about The Sandman on Netflix. The Sandman is by Neil Gaiman. You might recognize that name from American Gods, Coraline, Stardust, Good Omens. The Sandman, it is a graphic novel that Neil Gaiman put out uh, years ago. And it centers around a group of beings called the Endless, who are actually more powerful than gods. The Endless are dream, despair, death, desire, delirium. They all start with D. But it really centers around dream or Morpheus. And it starts with him being captured for about 100 years. And then the remainder of the series is him kind of cleaning up the mess that happened while he was imprisoned. Nightmares escaped, dreams escaped. The dreaming or his domain is in ruin. And it's him figuring out how to put all that back together, bring everything back to the dreaming, and learn how to be a little more human in the process. Dreams and nightmares that I create and which I must control. So I'm coming at this as an audiobook listener. Audible put out a two-part series that had James McAvoy playing Morpheus, and it was fantastic. There is a graphic novel. I haven't read it, but I plan on reading it now. So this review is going to be completely spoiler-free. So let's get into it. There are three characters in this that really stood out for me. Now, I know that there's a lot of issues with people who read the graphic novels and they have a very distinct view of who these characters are. For me personally, having only listened to the audiobook, I think it opened me up to accept a lot more. I absolutely loved Tom Sturridge in the role of Morpheus. He was fantastic. His voice just had that same quality that James McAvoy had in the audiobook. Somehow both monotone and very emotive at the same time speech pattern that I absolutely loved and yet somehow didn't fall asleep while listening to. I need your help. If dreams disappear, then so will humanity. I also really loved Gwendolyn Christie in the role of Lucifer. I know that a lot of people have a lot of issue with the fact that Lucifer is played by a female but give her a shot. It's just raw power. And it is beautiful and terrifying at the same time. I thought about giving up, but I have a job to do. Probably my favorite casting in this entire show is Kirby Howell Baptiste as Death. Death is one of those characters that could get easily lost. Important, but what comes through is the compassion and just stunning. You know, she is there for them. She knows that her role exists because they exist. And the way that she explains that, the way that she's there for them is perfection. I could do without dreams for a while. I haven't had a decent night's sleep in ages. From what I remember from the audiobooks, the only changes that I really remember is I feel like they leaned a lot more into the LGBTQIA content. I don't remember as much of that being in the audiobook, and maybe it just didn't stand out for me because I was just listening to it, but there is a lot in this. And some of that came from the, the, the fact that they changed out one character for another character that's a different gender. Maybe that affected this, but that was one thing that really stood out for me is, is a huge change. Everything else tracked pretty well as far as I can remember. If there's something that you noticed that I don't remember or didn't see because I didn't read the graphic novels, comment below, let me know. I'd love to I'd love to see what I'm in for when I'm reading those graphic novels over the next couple months. I'm not gonna stop until I've reshaped this world. So I thought overall the pacing of this was really, really fantastic. It was very easy to watch. Not, I, I would say not as easy to binge, 
just because there's a lot of content, there's a lot that you're getting through. But I really did love the fact that they picked one storyline that is happening and they really followed it through one or two. Whereas in the audiobook, you're kind of bouncing around a lot, like a lot. And this made it much more digestible, I felt. It felt like they pulled this right out of my head. Every aspect of what I envisioned was laid out in front of me. And I thought it was, for lack of a better word, perfect. From Gregory to Goldie to Lucifer and Morpheus, just perfect. I can honestly say that there really wasn't anything in this first season that I didn't like. I thought that the pacing was great, the characters were great, the casting was great. And honestly, I'm not surprised because Neil Gaiman was so involved with the casting and the process and the writing and everything else. So it lines up with exactly what I experienced from the audiobook, which he was the narrator on and was super involved with. So as far as disappointments, I didn't have any. I just can't wait for season two. Die. Mr. Sandman. Okay, everybody, once again, my name is Eric. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, and ring that bell for more angsty videos. Bye, you guys.